So today we have got some sneaky Lightroom tips coming your way. The oh, we forgot to do the intro. What's up guys, how you doing? I hope you guys are well. So today we have got another Lightroom tips video. I did a video using Lightroom um, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, to do with editing sports photos. Seemed to go down really well. So I'm gonna have a few more Lightroom videos coming along, coming your way pretty, pretty soon. This is the first one, gonna be a great video. Let's go. So guys, good to have you all here once again. Welcome to the video. Do me a favor, take that second, go hit the thumbs up. It helps me out loads on my video, as you already know. Don't forget to go check out my social media channels. You can find me over on Instagram. I'm gonna put them all on the screen right here. You can find me on Twitter as well, at Rob Samble's photo right here. So today we have got some Lightroom tips that I think will save you time when you're doing your editing. They're not necessarily tips about like how to actually edit. We're going to do some stuff like that in future videos. This is all about saving you time, how to utilize shortcuts, how to utilize a few quick key tips to save yourself time when you're using your edits. Almost all of them are things that I do all the time. Some of these I use literally every single time I edit photos, so I think they will save you a ton of time. We're going to spin around in a second. We're going to be doing it over here on the desktop so I can show you and set up Lightroom and I've got a few bits set up ready to go. Remember, these will not be all of the shortcuts that are available in Lightroom. If you guys have got other favorite shortcuts, let me know. Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you think the other shortcuts are that I should be using every single time I edit. Because these are just the ones that I like to use a lot. It doesn't mean they're the only ones. And there are a ton of things that you can do in Lightroom to save yourself time. So do everyone a favor. Let everyone know. Hit it in the comments below. Let us know what they are. Right, no more messing around. Let's spin around and let's get into Lightroom. Let's have a look okay right so now for for this what I'm gonna do I'm gonna jump into Lightroom and we are going to use um, actually my my thumbnail that you guys might recognize from the video just a couple of days ago and we're gonna play around and use some of these shortcuts and some of the tips to help you speed up your process the first thing that we're going to look at is going to be to do with white balance, right? Now, let's say you come into Lightroom. This image right now looks good, but let's say it didn't. Let's say you've had to shoot this under some funny lighting or something. The image is all blue like this. What do you want to do? You want to try to warm it up. You want to cool it down if it's too warm. And then normally you might come over here and use this slider and decide, oh, no, that's too warm. Oh, that's way too cold. But you know what you can do to start with to get yourself nearly all the way there? You literally hit W on your keyboard. You press W and it brings up this white balance selector. Now what you need to do is you need to look for something in your image that you believe to be white. And I would say right now this little thing up here looks to be white. You click on that and it bases your white balance on the thing you clicked on. Now you might still need to tweak it. We might decide, you know what, we need to maybe just give it one little tweak that way or the other way. But generally speaking, that is gonna get you roughly into the right ballpark and that will save you a load of time when you are trying to get your white balance corrected properly. So what's the next thing? The next thing is to do with cropping. Let's say we want to crop this photo, okay? You come up here, you bring your crop tool open, you can start adjusting stuff. But what you could also do, just hit R on your keyboard. Hit R on your keyboard, it automatically takes you to the crop tool. So much quicker, especially when you mid-edit, you want to do something, literally, you bring it up there, you start cropping, you're good to go. The next tip is also to do with cropping. Let's say you're in this, you want to crop, you've hit R, you've got your crop thing up. Next thing you want to do is to try and turn this into a portrait image. Now, you can start getting your sides, you can bring them in, you can start getting your thing about right, oh, probably about there, a little bit wider. You want to start bringing it back and forwards. Or, something you can do to save a load more time is to come back in you're in the crop mode. All you have to do is hit 
X on your keyboard and it will automatically turn it into a portrait crop maintaining the same aspect ratio that you had on the original image. Now in this case for example that would be too narrow I still would want to then widen that up anyway but nonetheless that is such a quick way to quickly turn your image to a portrait crop just by hitting one key on your keyboard. Okay the next tip is to do with graduated filters. Now I like to use graduated filters quite a bit especially if one area of my image is a little bit too dark or I want to bring down the corners or maybe the top or the bottom especially if you guys are shooting landscapes you might want to um, you know to brighten a, a sky or darken a sky the graduated filter tool is up here in your toolbar um, it's this one here in the middle but what you can also do anywhere when you're in your image in the development module right here you hit one key on your keyboard M and straight away you are already in the graduated filter. We can bring that down from the top and darken the top. See we've got that shine in the top right of the image. I could bring that down. That's too far but probably to about kind of there. Hit done and I've done it. Just like that one click on the keyboard switch me to my graduated filter. My next tip, this is one of my favourite ones, this is one that I like. Sometimes when you're going through your set of images, you're looking at an image and thinking, you know what, that could look good black and white. Now, you could go all the way through and edit and you could turn it to a black and white image and then you could decide, does it look good, does it not? Or, here's something else you could try. Any image that you're in within Lightroom, if you hit one key, V, it will turn it to a black and white image. Now, of course, that isn't going to be right. You would want to tweak it from there. You'd want to change your highlights, your shadows, etc., etc., etc. But what that gives you an idea of is a quick glance at does that image look good enough in black and white? Is it the right kind of image for black and white? You might want to toggle between the two. You hit V again, it turns it back. Hit it again. It's black and white. Hit it again, it's colour. And it gives you such a quick and easy way to look at an image and decide would this image look better in black and white. My next tip runs straight off the back of something like this. If you want to play with an image, but you're thinking, you know what, I'm not sure. I don't want to go through all that work and convert it. And then actually the original and I want to be better, but then I've converted it and I've got to redo it. Well, you know what you can do? You can create what you call a virtual copy. And that's really easy to do. Make sure you've got the photo you want selected on the bottom. All you have to do is press Control apostrophe and it will create a virtual copy. You'll now see down here on the bottom, we've got two copies of this same file. We can edit this one. For example, we could turn it to black and white. We could do all sorts of other stuff with it. And if at the end of it, we decide it's not right and it wasn't the right thing to do with that image, it doesn't matter because we've already got the original copy right there. My next tip, I like this one. I use this all the time, every time I'm editing photos. You know when you go through a load of work and you edit a photo and you just want to... You want to have a look at it. You want to decide, well, I just want to pause for a minute. I just want to look at this photo and decide if this is at the right stage, if I've got it where I want it to be. Something which I find really, really useful to help me do that. You look at your photo. If you hit L on your keyboard, it's what I like to call a blackout. It takes out all the stuff around the outside. It just lets you focus on your image. If you press L once more, it goes completely dark around the outside and I can really look at my image now and I can see how it looks as a standalone photo. If you press L once more, you're back to where you started and you're back within your Lightroom module. Simple as that. I use that one almost every time I'm editing photos. Okay, my next tip, and again, when I'm editing photos, what I would do a lot of the time is I will sort photos out. Now, when I'm live editing, I do that based on photos I'd locked in the back of the camera. But later on, when I've got a full set of photos, I sometimes will go through and organize those into key categories. For me, those categories tend to be really like that photo. That's gonna be one of the ones I'm 100% gonna use and I want to edit that one first. I have a set of photos where I'm like, yeah, that's a cool photo. I'm probably going to use it, but it won't be in the first initial set of like 10 images that I'm looking for. And then I also have my third category, which tends to be probably definitely don't want that one. Not going to delete it, but pretty sure I don't want it. And of course, I have the fourth category where it's just rubbish and I'm getting rid of it. But for that one, it's a bit different because I don't keep that at all. I just press X so it's marked so I can get rid of it. So what do I use? I use the color coding. Now, 
If you're in the development module or the library module, it doesn't matter, you can do it in either one. Down here on the bottom, as you start going through your photos, and you guys can see I've got my various thumbnails up here, I can go through and I can color code these. The easiest way to do this, rather than having to select the colors over here on the right, is just use the numbers on your keyboard. Numbers six, seven, eight, and nine reference different colors. So let's say I'm going along. Personally, the way I tend to do it is if I don't want a photo and I'm not gonna use it, I hit six. That turns the label red. And you'll see down here on the bottom, this is now marked red. Let's say this one, maybe I'm gonna use it. I hit seven and that turns it yellow. Further along, I decide, you know what? This one's an absolute banger. I'm 100% using this. I hit eight and it turns it green. And that is the color coding I use for my images. So let's say I went all the way through and I did that with a load of my images along the bottom. What I can then do over here on the right hand side, I can select just the ones I want. So let's say I've decided, right, so first up, I just want to look at my absolute bangers. Those are the ones I want to look at first. I know I've labeled those ones green. Over here, I click the green filter and suddenly it's just showing me my green labeled images. All the others are still there. If I turn it off, it brings me all the other ones back. But I find that really, really useful for organizing photos. I know some people use the star numbered module. I tend to use those color labels a lot. I really think they're handy. Another tool I love is to do with the sliders and all the editing sliders within that development module. Now, all the time, I'm over here playing with these sliders, but sometimes I find the mouse a little bit not accurate enough, and I'll be over here adjusting the contrast, and oh, I've gone too far, and oh, I'm back, and oh no, that's awful, and I'm back again. What, what you can do, if you just click on the little marker on the slider, if you just click it, and then you let go of your mouse altogether, you can use the cursors on your keyboard to bring that slider up and down. And it's just going to move it by a little bit each time. I find that much more accurate and it helps me get my contrast or my exposure, my shadows, my highlights, whichever slider I'm using, exactly where I want them to be. I find that really, really useful. Now my last tip, but certainly not my least tip, is to do with straightening images. And this is something I do all the time when I'm out there working sports events and I wanna straighten my images pitch side as quick as I can. Now, let's pretend that we have got this image here in front of us. Now, right now, this image is not straight. I've deliberately made it not straight. It was straight when I took it, but let's pretend it's like this is not straight and I want to get it straightened up. I can come into the crop module and I can be over here with the corner trying to get this exactly where I want it. But something else I can do, you see over here this tool, it says angle next to it. If you click on this, you reference anything in your image that you would want to be straight. And for me, it would be the edge of this table. If you click one end of that point and using this tool, you draw yourself a line down here to the other end of this point it will straighten the image exactly in line with what you just drew. Click done, and just like that, I've got a straightened image exactly how I wanted it with minimal fuss. Right, let's move back over this way so we can round off. Cool, so that's about it. I hope you guys found that useful. Hopefully that will help you to save some time when you are doing your edits in Lightroom. I'm sure it will. It certainly saves me a ton of time. If you did enjoy it, please do take that second. Go hit the thumbs up button on the video. It helps me out loads. It helps my video to be more successful and it helps my channel to be more successful. And who wouldn't want that, right? I know all of you guys want that. Of course you do. Please do think about subscribing if you haven't already. We've got a ton of other videos coming on my channel. We are knocking out three videos videos a week right now. That's right, three videos. This is the third video this week. And in fact, we also had a live stream Monday night in the Facebook group um, for the guys who are in the Facebook group. So actually, these are four videos I've done this week, if you include the live stream seminar. If you want to find out about the live stream seminar, our next one is coming up in May. Go check out the first link in the description below for the Patreon page, and you can find out more about that. Right, guys, in the meantime, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys I will see you on the next video.